I'm Rudy Thrain here from Android Coliseum. I'm just going to do a bit of a run through of uh, the app setup you'd want to have in the iRobot Roomba app. Um, I got to say, this isn't, it's not been that long, and we just love the our little robot so much. His name is Spot. Uh, refer to him as our new little pet. So let's just first, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole walk up uh, through as you would get set up, but I wanted to make sure, you know, so you're in the smart home, you can adjust your account, et cetera there. Um, but we're in the smart home app. And I uh, just wanted to go down um, to, was it here? Account. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, let's go down to the bottom. No, it was here. Smart home. All right, that's right. We're in the smart home features. Um, and you want to make sure first off that you're set up with Google Assistant so that it knows that you can actually actually ask your your home minis or any of your assisted devices by you know voice commands to control this. And that's kind of cool. You can even do things like automations in terms of like instead of doing a schedule, which I'll get to later, you can just get it to say, well, once I know that you're no longer home, I can do a cleaning run. But we'll we'll talk about that later. So I just want to make sure that's one of the first things I like to do is make sure it's set up with there after it's set up, uh, you go through. Um, so the other thing is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we go down to the robot settings, we can see all about spot. And I think this is kind of cool. So you want to give them a name spot because uh, again, you can control, call, control that with your assistant. Um, and, you, know, you can call him Dustin. You can call him all sorts of fun things. And it gives him a birth date. Oh, Okay, and then we can go through our other settings, make sure they're all there as well. But that's where you would go and adjust to see where his name is. So immediately, what you'd want to do is say, okay, let's do a new job. Um, but in the beginning, none of these floors are going to be there. So what you would first do is actually say, vacuum everywhere. And that's just going to get him to go from the base and go all the way around the house and uh, just kind of figure out his map. And it's going to take a while for it to figure out where things are, and it does take a longer time um, to do that, but eventually it's going to figure this map out and say, hey, I think I've got an idea of what I'm looking at here. So, and this is where we, we take a look at the map. So we need that map. Now, I've set it up for three different, like, maps. Our main floor, where the base is, and you can see um, I have a the basement, and then I also have our back landing, which is just like the porch back there. So there's three separate. Now, the way I did these is you would just pick up spot, put them down in, into one of the other map areas, and just tell it to clean or do a clean everywhere. It'll recognize it's not near home and then try to do as much as it can for cleaning. You can also do a... Uh, well, I can't do it now because it's not there. Uh, do a mapping run or something like that. So I'm not showing where. Well, if we're, well, if we're still learning, you would say do a map run. I, I had to customize it because every time I get it to do it, it would just, it just add new maps. So eventually, I had to say, you know, just customize this map, you know, and and save it, and then I would be able to do that. The main floor, it it just figured it out. Anyway, so now we have a map. Now it's going to start suggesting that there might be floors on this map. And now automatically, you might automatic. It have those on there. If it doesn't, you can say, let's add a room divider. You can add a new room divider if you wanted to. So if I wanted to really separate out, you know, some area of the room from something else, but I don't want to here. But let's say I wanted to adjust, because right now it used to be this living room was this big thing here. I added in that little line for the foyer when you come in our house, but I, I wanted to tap that one. I can move that to wherever I think the foyer is. I can rotate it around. I can use two fingers and do that. I'm just going to cancel and leave it there. So I can play around with those rooms. And then I would then you know, go back out. And then you can take a look at labels of the rooms. And then you would tap that label. And you would call it what? Is it a garage? Is it the laundry room? Is it the master bedroom? The media room? the hallway, and or you can give it custom and call it whatever you want. And I'm looking at this. Yeah, it's got mm, weird again. That is the master bedroom. So I always double check these things, right? No, not master bed. Master bedroom. 
This is the hallway. This is the master bedroom. That's Dean's bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room. Huh. That's weird that it had a different name here again. Because I've noticed that sometimes. Mm, maybe a big of an issue. We'll have to look into this later. You can also do, once you're done labeling the rooms, add in. Yeah. And I've just kind of ruined uh, my schedules. And I'll talk about that in a bit later. Because I've changed the rooms. You can also add in zones. So I can, for example, keep out zone. Like, let's not go do Dean's room, or let's, there's a certain part in the, you know, let's say, don't go into the, the furnace room on another floor or something. You can add a, a do not clean room, or you can just add a zone saying, you know what, this is the couch. And I can call out the couch, and I if I wanted to do that couch, and so I can tell it just to clean that couch when I do that, right? Or if I want to say, you know, the kitchen, you know, here's this, this is the stove. That's the stove area, right? So I want to say, let's call that the stove or something, right? Oven, or whatever. We could call it whatever we want, and we could call that cool thing. Go back out, and yeah. So that's what you can adjust the windows. You have those floors, you have the, the rooms, and then you have your zones, now you can do is say new job. And you can say, well, what do you want to clean? Now, obviously, it's only showing the main floor because that's where the base is attached to. If you want it to clean somewhere else, you have to go and pick it up somewhere else and, and put it down. And then it'll know, hey, I'm in a different zone. And then I can not next to my base. So therefore, I can do that. The other part you might want to do now is now schedule. So again, I I had a schedule set up because I changed the names again. It said things are gone completely. So you would set up a schedule to either automation. So as soon as I leave, do something. Or at a certain time every day. So every day we do at 7.30 p.m. Every day. Oh, weekdays. We clean. I want to first clean the foyer. And the order is important. Then I want to click clean the hallway. And then I want to clean the kitchen. And then it'll go back to base. Cool. Now, let's say I'm like, you know what? After it's done that, I would like to go and clean the living room. At 9.30. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, what's going to happen is it says, well... You're already cleaning at 7.30. You should probably make sure we have three hours in between. I don't know why it needs three hours, because it, sh it usually only has about a 70-minute battery. Um, so it doesn't really need that long. But I guess if it has a big job, it wants to have enough time in between. So I'm going to cancel that for sure for now. Uh, I might do one different one. But that, that's the schedule we do every day. The other kind of cool thing you can now do, once you've done these jobs... I can look at my little job I did. I told it to clean the porch, right? And there's the porch it did. And those little dots tell you those are like extra dirty spots. That's the porch. That's the foyer area. Now, I'm not going to change the names. Oops, a little bit. Let me just make sure. Those are all looking right. Okay. Back to the history. So I can see the job I did there. I can see, whoops. Let's go to a bigger job today. Well, let's go tap the whole history thing. And this is kind of cool. I love charts. I don't know why, but I do. So here's a, a job I did today. Now, this one got weird because it, it was supposed to go out, do the hallway, and then kitchen, and then come back, do the then. But it went into Dean's room. It, started, it had Dean's name, room as scheduled there. So it's kind of weird. Um, so... I had to cancel it or when I came back and I had canceled, but you can get details. Okay, it cleaned so much area, uh, how many different dirt events it had, how long it cleaned for, etc. So I just love having this kind of data. Here's one yesterday, it got stuck. Again, it was cleaning an area and then it started cleaning the living room. I don't know why. And then it had docking issues connecting to the dock. It was weird. 
but I love Spot. He does a really good job for the most part, most times. And there's, there's a normal clean job. And look, no real dirt, dirty spots. Because we've been doing a fairly clean one. Now there's one where it's uh, a little messier there. Cool. But that's the app in a nutshell. I really like this. I think the app is, makes it super handy and the fact that you can use your Google Assistant to voice automate it if you wanted. So if I was cleaning the kitchen, I could just tell it, have spot clean by the stove. If I had mapped the zone out, it'll do it. Have spot clean the foyer, have spot clean Dean's room. It'll do it. Great. It's a great app and uh, you have to set it all up here in the brain of the app. Okay. Thanks everybody. Boop.